If you've been trying to figure out which AI tool to use and you feel overwhelmed, in this video, we're going to talk about the big four AI tools, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and Perplexity. I'll demonstrate each one with similar tasks so you can decide which one is right for your work that you're doing right now. And since this is a massive video, check the chapter links in the description so you can click around and get to the part that you want. So grab your favorite beverage and let's begin. Let's start with what these AI tools have in common. So for ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini, they are all what is called large language models or LLMs. Some people call them chatbots. Think of them as a conversation partner or a thinking partner that responds to your questions, your writing, your ideas, and your research. No matter if you type into them or talk to them, they can summarize documents that you give them, help you organize your messy notes, brainstorm new research ideas, draft paragraphs of writing, and even transcribe documents and analyze photographs. And the fun part is many of these have a voice mode. This function of voice mode is perfect if you want to work hands-free. Now, each of these tools has a free plan and a paid plan, and you can think of the free plan as like a preview of what is possible with it. But with the paid plan, you're going to want to actually commit to one of these tools and pay the monthly fee so that you get the full benefit out of it. The bonus of these monthly plans is that they are truly a monthly plan. At the end of the month, you can just cancel it. There's no long-term commitment to any one of them. Just batch all your work together. Let's say you want to analyze a bunch of photographs, analyze them intensely for a week or two or three, and then cancel the subscription. So I just described a bunch of things that it can do, but it does have some serious limits. First, it can't reliably read cursive or handwritten documents. I know it produces amazing results when it transcribes, but it is not reliable at doing this. Especially if the document is in a language other than English, you're going to have a difficult time. Don't rely on it for a transcription. You've got to be able to read these documents yourself. Second, AI can't search historical archives or genealogy websites on your behalf. I really wish it could, so there's no magical access secret database of historical records somewhere that it's going to pull up things for us. And finally, AI isn't perfect. Sometimes it just makes things up, and we call that a hallucination. Just like any other source shouldn't be considered a source of truth, it should be considered a help to your research. Now let's talk about perplexity. I mentioned the three large language models. Perplexity is a different kind of artificial intelligence. It is basically a search-based tool. Perplexity actively searches the web and then it'll come back with a summary of what it finds in search. And if you would like to get into researching with perplexity in detail, I made this video researching the lives of people during the Revolutionary War, which you may find interesting. Now let's go meet all these AIs and see what they can do. Now the best way to test these AIs, these large language models, is to put them to the test. So we are going to do three tasks with our AIs and see how they fare. I am going to try it out on this ancestor of mine. Well, side line ancestor, but still, he's in my family tree. Francis Wilmer, we're going to write a short biography of him, just 150 words. We're then going to ask for a research plan based on that biography, that timeline that I'm giving it to write the biography. What's a research plan that it can give me? And the last thing is we're going to have it give us some real in-depth information. And I'll just show you what that is when we get to it. I'll leave it as a teaser because it's kind of odd you're going to like it. So here is how I get my basic information into these large language models. If I have a timeline of an ancestor, which I often do, either from Ancestry, Family Search, or my genealogy software, I highlight it by just running down the page, just like this. And then I simply right click and hit copy. Once I do that, it's in the clipboard and I can paste that anywhere. Google Gemini. I gave Google Gemini the time timeline of information. It is here in this prompt. You can see how messy it is. And just ask it, write a 150 word biography for Francis Wilmer based on the facts in this timeline. Here's all the facts on the timeline. Very, very messy. And 
Google Gemini went off and did it. And it gave me the answer in a format it calls Canvas. The Canvas format allows me to type and change. But you can see here, the biography is very simple. When he was born, where he lived, when his children were born, and when he died. Looks like basically an obituary. Now, let's see how ChatGPT did. It's the most commonly used tool, so probably the one that a lot of people are going to go to first. I gave it the same prompt, the same information, and here is what it came up with. Two paragraphs, a little more flowery. We've got some professionally, his life intersected with wartime and post-war America. That's a little dramatic. It's got a little flair. And then it signs off, which I think of as ChatGPT distinctive text being a legacy of family resilience and reinvention. I think 90% of the genealogy writing ChatGPT does will have this phrase in it. So let's look at Claude. I like the title. I mean, just the font, <laughs> the way the font is in uh, Claude. Reads a lot like an obituary. Gives me some details about that the family moved frequently between Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Colorado, but he also got married in Texas, so I didn't you know, I mean, there was something in there about Montana. So it's not exactly right on all the details. And we've got some South Dakota in here, but it's a similar style for all of these large language models. Everything is pretty much the same, except for ChatGPT, a little bit odd. For fun, I put it into perplexity. Perplexity can call up these other large language models. You don't have to just use it as a search engine. So let's just see how it did. And it did a pretty good job. It wrote just like every other large language model. When Francis was born, different places he moved and lived, when the children were born, and then when he passed away in 2001. Now let's go ahead and rate our AIs here and how they did with writing a short biography. I gave ChatGPT three stars for this, mostly because it was a little too flowery and dramatic for me. But for the other AIs, Gemini, Claude, and Perplexity, I gave them all four stars. So they weren't quite at the level of that I would like for a biography, but it was really close. And I feel it would get me 90% of the way there for writing a short biography. And I could easily edit the rest that I wanted. And the best part is, is that their effort took about 30 seconds. So a big win for AI. Now let's move on with our second task, which is a little bit more difficult, which is creating that research plan based off of what I gave it in the timeline. I want to know more about Francis's life or writing family history, I want to get really into the details for Francis's life. We'll start again with Google Gemini. Our prompt is just going to be a very simple conversational one. I'm not getting into a detailed prompt here. Ideally, I would do that. Given the life events of Francis Wilmer, suggest a genealogical research plan to determine his various occupations and understand the places he lived over his lifetime. So, it picks up the key information from the biography and then gives me what it suggests for the next steps. It's got census records, city directories, military records, social security application, which would actually be really great for the occupational one. Every employer is listed. You can get that through a FOIA request to social security and then tells me to stay organized and contact newspaper archives. Nothing really shocking here or revelatory. I have a lot of these records already. I didn't tell it that. I gave it no context. So let's see what I get with ChatGPT. It comes back with a step-by-step -step plan. This seems a little more organized to me than the one I got from Google Gemini. Step one, start with census and federal records, and it gives me exact years. Step two, military and government records, and it tells me civilian personnel records from the National Archives and tells me the exact record group. This is some good information. Step three, city directories and local resources. Gives me the exact years and the exact locations. This is a great research partner right here doing some summary of information for me so I don't have to do it myself. It's going into step four, going through to make sure I get the details from the records I already have for the obituary and the death certificate, and then local archives might be helpful. So this is a really detailed research plan and I really like it because it goes step by step and I can almost like check it off. Now 
Let's see how Claude does. And it starts to break down what I need to do. It says priority research areas, and I like the word priority because it helps me get organized. Breaks it down to the same kinds of records that the other LLMs did, military, census, employment, newspaper archives, property and tax records, professional directories and licenses is a new one, obituary research, so it's kind of ignored the fact that I already gave it an obituary, and then interview living relatives. So it does have some ideas here, which I had not considered. Interesting, but sort of on par with what Google Gemini did. So, so far, chat GPT ahead on the research plan. Now, the last one we're going to check is perplexity. And for this, I'm getting some very general information based on, again, what it's finding on the web. So it's telling me primary goal and secondary goal for the research objectives. It knows that this is some good terminology from the articles that it read and I'm getting key record types. Census records, city directories, military records, vital, obituary, same things that I got before. Now, when it comes to creating a research plan, it's a little hard to rate these AIs because they all gave us something useful. But I've got to say, ChatGPT, for the way it formatted it, I'm giving it five stars. That was a format that worked for me, the step-by-step -step and the way it did the bullet points. Gemini, Claude, and Perplexity had the core components of what I could do next, but it wasn't as organized, just a personal preference, but you might write it differently. Now, the last task. This task number three is the hardest. And I am telling them, I know Francis Wilmer worked for the US Census Bureau in 1950. And I know this because it is listed as his employer on the 1950 census. And I believe, and this is from oral family history, that he was a lifelong federal employee. How could I obtain his employment history with the federal government? This is a very specific question. If you've been paying attention, one of these large language models models already gave me the answer. But let's see how they all do because this is our hardest task and the kind of things that we are doing as genealogists looking for very, very specific record sets. So we will start again with Google Gemini. Let's see how it does. Oh, it is really thinking here. And it tells me it's updated the genealogical research plan to include specific steps to get these records from NARA and the OPF office. I should say the OPF folder, which is the official record. So let me check because if it updated it, it would be in this canvas. Haha, -ha. it did update it and it highlighted it for me so I could see the part that it changed. I like this. Federal Employment History tells me the National Personnel Records Center is the center depository. And because he was employed both before and after, I need to make two different requests here. So I'm only going to be able to get the ones for the employment that I already know. Maybe I can get it. Maybe I can't. Let's see if the other large language models can help me with some detailed things. Now let's go to ChatGPT. If you were paying attention, ChatGPT had already given me these details, but let's see how it does and if it gets even more specific. Wow, has it gotten more specific. ChatGPT gives me the step-by-step -step guide to obtaining federal employment records. It tells me start with a FOIA request to the MPRC and it tells me exactly what I can request. Again in this bullet list it tells me exactly where to go on the website. They're at the NARA in St. Louis and the exact form I need for military records which is fantastic. His social security application. I think I am going to do that because that is definitely available and I'll get the years he was employed in different places, hopefully. Oh, and here's a brand new record. The official register of the U.S. lists every federal civil servant with their job title, salary, and department. I had no idea that this existed. This is fantastic. And it looks like I can get it on Hathi Trust or in a library. So online is the way to go. And I'm very excited. Government employee directories. I didn't know about these. Retired from the federal service, which is probably pretty likely. I am really excited by this answer. Now, this is where I would stop right now and, and go off and research this. But we're committed to comparing the other large language models. So let's check out Claude and see how it does with the same request. Okay, tells me that the primary sources, I love the word primary because that tells me it's like original, it's it's historical, it's, you know, the go-to place. U.S. Census Bureau specific records. Hmm, I could actually find out where he was on the organizational chart. 
That could be interesting. Again, the federal register appointments, congressional records, possibly if he was confirmed for something, gives me some supporting research strategies, including thrift savings plans. So I'm getting more and more record sets here, which is kind of cool. Nothing specifically in terms of linking me to an exact website or address where I could go next. Not bad, not bad. Now the last one is perplexity, and I'm really counting on it to come through because it's a search engine first. Now, this is the most specific title yet, how to obtain Francis Wilmer's federal employment history. Number one, request the OPF folder. Okay, and it tells me what to put in the request letter. I love it. Where to mail it to, fantastic. And then it tells me additional sources, again, social security, a FOIA request, which I can submit to specific agencies. Okay, so I'm learning something here. It might've been in the other ones, but I just light bulb went off. If I get the social security earnings report, then I would hopefully know every agency that he worked for in the federal government. Then I can make a FOIA request to each one of those. Hmm, that sounds like fun. <laughs> If you're a genealogist, you know that sounds like fun. All right, and then we get to our newspaper archives. Ooh, what I get here is I don't get information in the text that it came back with, but it came back with the citation links. Let me go to the citation links. Number two is the Office of Personnel Management. So it gives me more details there. Link eight is to a Reddit board. And number nine is, again, the Office of Personnel Management management and gives me more details on personnel actions, which I didn't understand. I didn't know. So I can read what those are and find out how those records can help. Perplexity ends the results, giving me some tips and then gives me again, the list of things to include in the letter. Now identifying a specific record in a specific archive was a tough challenge for our AIs, but I really feel like there was a clear winner here with ChatGPT. GPT. I'm giving it five stars for giving me the exact location address where I could obtain those employment records. Gemini and Claude didn't do quite as well. I'm giving them three stars. I mean, the information was definitely adequate, but not quite to the level of ChatGPT. Perplexity, again, four stars. It's doing well, not quite as well as ChatGPT, but definitely a better job than the other two. Now, how did our AIs compare overall? So I gave them each four stars. Now, if you were looking for a clear winner out of this, I'm sorry, I wish I had one, but it's really a matter of personal preference and style and which AI you wanna commit your subscription dollars to. Honestly, after I ran this test, if I was gonna pick one, I'd probably go with perplexity. Now, this is shocking because I did give ChatGPT the highest scores a couple times and perplexity can do short writing, research plans, identifying records and archives. I would pick perplexity for my subscription dollars at this point. Now to make your choice even easier between these different AI tools, I put together a quiz and a comparison chart as a downloadable PDF. Click the link in the description in order to get that. It's gonna be really handy. Wouldn't you wanna use one of these AI tools to find a federal employment record rather than going through this to figure it out? As much as I love having this copy of the guide to federal records. I just gotta admit, I think AI is the way to go.